Hey everybody, how are we doing today? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm so thankful that you have found this video, that it made its way to you. And I'm just happy that you're here. Today I want to talk about how we find community, especially as Catholics, right? I mean, I've talked to a lot of people who have noticed the difference between going to church in your typical kind of modern evangelical Protestant church where it seems like everybody just wants to be your best friend. And you walk in the door and it feels just like you are the star of the show. And then you go to a Catholic church and nobody even cares that you're there, it seems like. There's all sorts of differences that a lot of times we, we find. And when someone becomes convinced of the reality of Catholicism and then they decide, hey, I wanna become Catholic, they can sometimes have these bright eyes and expectations and come into the Catholic church with this, with like, I'm here, this is awesome. And then they realize that it's kind of different. And oftentimes people struggle with that finding uh, community. And yes, we are live right now. So um, I want to share with you guys a few things about it. And then uh, maybe here's some questions or listen to you guys. But I mean, if you're, if you're a convert, especially raise your hand right now, if you have felt like, it's a completely different world when it comes to um, finding community. A lot of times in, in Protestant churches, there is such an emphasis placed on small groups and fellowship. I know that uh, Estelle was a small group coordinator for uh, a couple of the churches that, that we were at, and that's what she did uh, most of the time was coordinating groups and helping bring people together into these relationships because we what we learned was if people don't form meaningful relationships with other people on the journey it's really easy to find your way into a church through the front door and then find your way out through the back door and people fall through the cracks all the time but in catholicism there doesn't seem to be that same type of emphasis there doesn't seem to be that same type of priority placed on those things <clears throat> now i do realize that there are always exceptions to this. I am not saying that every Protestant church is super friendly and every Catholic church is super unfriendly. I get that there are differences. Shoot, even in my own town, there are some Catholic parishes that do this really well, and there are some Protestant churches that don't do it at all. So I get that it's an example or that there are uh, exceptions here. But I think by and large, this is something that I hear about a lot. And it's something that I've experienced. And I want to talk about today just what to do, because I do believe this, that you need community. And, and even though, like Eugene, our brother here, says I'm introverted, so I was quite happy. People didn't care that I was there. <laughs> I get that too. But even for, uh, for people who are introverted, it's still important that we have some kind of relationships um, because we're not called to do this on our own. So let's talk for a few minutes about, first of all, why we might – experience some of these differences and um, what to do about it. And one of the reasons why I think we experience this is because people come into a, a, a mass with typically a different approach than they do going to a, a worship service or whatever in, in a Protestant world. And, and churches know that. Leadership in churches have a sense, like in, in the Protestant world, and I can speak from experience because, again, I was a pastor for a long time and worked on church staffs for a long time, we we made it a pretty big priority to attract people to the church. And we wanted to make sure that when they came, they felt welcomed, cared for, and important. Now, I think that's a good thing, even if you're a Catholic. I think that's amazing. But what I've noticed is, so so then here are here's the ramifications of that. <clears throat> when you're when you're doing that, you're gonna structure things to cause that to happen. So you'll have greeters everywhere. You might have signs in the parking lot. You might have all sorts of different ways. You're going to acknowledge people differently in the services. You're going to have somebody come up and give a welcome that imagines that everyone who's there doesn't know who anybody is. I remember it feeling kind of strange that every time I got up week after week after week, I had to introduce myself. Hey, my name is Keith Nestor and I'm one of the pastors here on staff. And most of the people, you just expect that they knew that. But we had to imagine that there were those that didn't. We wanted them to feel comfortable. And I'll tell you, I don't think those are bad things to do, even some of them, in, in the, the context of Catholicism. But 
with the mass, things are different because the focus isn't on the people that are coming. The focus inherently is on the worship of God through the sacrifice of the mass. So everybody's pointed kind of in a different direction. Okay. And I know that that might seem hard to understand, but when you're new, I just want to speak to new people for a minute. You have to recognize that you can't have the same type of expectations that you would have because people aren't trying to do the same type of thing. So I don't want to do too deep of a dive on this because I really want to do talk about how we find community, but we have to start with understanding the expectation. Okay. If you come into a Catholic church, expecting everyone to hand you a coffee cup and a loaf of bread and come visit you in your house, you know, at three o'clock in the afternoon that weekend, it's just not going to happen. It's typically not the way things work because the other thing is people in Catholicism, they, they don't always camp out at the same parish week after week, or even the same mass week after week. We kind of recognize as Catholics that, that our home church really isn't about that particular place. Our home church is anywhere there's a priest and a tabernacle. So we can feel free to sort of roam a little bit and bounce around. And there isn't like this pressure put on us to be in the same place every week at the same time. And that's a little different in the Protestant world. Like in the Protestant world, you join a particular church and that's where you promise to be and be plugged in and all that. And I think people do that in parishes too, but it's just, it's just not the same. And I think you know what I'm talking about. So I'll give you a great example. Last week, <clears throat> we went to our Sunday evening mass, which is at like five o'clock at night or 530 at night. They call it the last chance mass because in the city where we live, it's kind of the last one. So what we saw, and we never go to that mass because we always go to the to a mass early in the morning, but we were traveling. So we went to the parish, we got there and it was packed. We had to sit in the very last row. We got there, you know, right about as the time it was starting and I couldn't believe it. And what you see when you go to that mass are people from all over the city, all different parishes that have come together because that was the time that was going to work for them. And that is kind of a, a normative thing in, in Catholicism. People will bounce around depending on what's going to be working for their schedule or whatever. So it's going to happen. Now, this is not a talk about whether or not parishes should be friendly. Of course they should be. Everyone needs to own that. That's not just something that a church staff needs to uh, own. That's as much on me as a parishioner as it is on the priest or the staff people of the church. We all need to create that in, that hospitable environment where we're all looking for people and, and friendly and open and inviting. We just need to do that. But what do we do when we're trying to find this community? When we come together, like let's say we're a convert, okay? Like I was and some of you were, um, and you're coming into this and it's like, why, you know, why is it so hard? I, I don't, there's not like a bunch of small groups. There's no one trying to plug me in. There's no one that seems to notice I'm here and there. Like, what do I need to do? So I want to talk about that for for a couple minutes now that we've established maybe the, the reason why. I think it's important to establish that reason because here's the reason why it's not. OK, it's not because the Catholic Church doesn't like people or is mean or is inhospitable. Right. Some people say things like that. Oh, I went to the Catholic Church and nobody even cared that I was there. Well, as you just saw, like our friend Eugene, he's like, I didn't want anybody to know I was there. And I, I knew like I was that way, too. When I was kind of exploring things, I didn't want anyone to make a big deal out of the fact that I was there. And so sometimes people are looking for that. Sometimes they're not. But one thing that I heard recently from someone who was is a Protestant guy, he's actually in ministry, and he was exploring Catholicism a little bit. He said he went into a Catholic church and he was so impressed that nobody cared that he was there. Not because he didn't want there to be a inhospitable environment, but he said, I walked in and he goes, I felt so small. And that was a good thing. Because he was blown away by the grandeur and the beauty and the power of the mass. And he was like, wow, this is really, truly about God. And I don't feel like I'm going into an infomercial TED Talk. And sometimes that can happen. And I know I keep, I'm kind of getting a little, some tangents here, but just bear with me here. I'll get to my little practical steps here. But I want to, I want to say something about that because it's important. Sometimes people can, can 
make the programs of their church more important than the purpose of their church. All right, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Many years ago, um, I was in a really rough spot and Estelle and I were in a really rough spot and we went to go to church one time and I, wa- I and I was like, we were off from that Sunday. Back, this is back when I was still in ministry or whatever. And I'm like, we just need to go to church where we can just be ministered to. And so we drove out of town so that nobody would know us. And we just needed to worship God and be blessed by going to a worship service. And we went to this mega church <clears throat> that was in a different city. And we just, we were hurting and we needed to feel the presence of God. And we walked in and every time we turned around, somebody was handing us some kind of flyer or brochure about something they wanted us to do. Somebody was trying to get us to come over to a booth to fill out a bunch of stuff and give them a bunch of information and plug us in to some kind of program, which we didn't want to do that. All right. And every time we turned around, there was like, hey, welcome. I'm so-and-so. What's your name? Tell me about your family. Who are you? And and I get that, but we weren't interested. We went and we sat in the back and we waited for the thing to start. And when the church service finally started, it was one infomercial after another on the video screen. Hey, let me tell you about this new thing that we're doing and we'd love to get you to sign up. Now here comes Joe to tell you more about it. And then this guy would get up and even talk about it. And then some woman came out and shared another thing. And then some guy cut up and talked about the thing they had going on next week. And it was literally like a gigantic infomercial that led into a couple of worship songs. And then a Ted talk from the pastor who also talked about like his sermon that week wasn't about the gospel. It wasn't about the Lord. It was about how their church was awesome. And they had all these things that they were going to do and how we needed to all become a part of it. And I just needed Jesus that day. And I'm not trying to be a complainer, but I didn't get him. I didn't get him. And we walked out of there more discouraged and depressed. And I'll tell you this, that has never happened to me one time going to mass. Now, I'm not saying that all the masses I've ever been to have been executed perfectly. And there hasn't ever been like hokey music and some dorky announcements or whatever. Those things have happened. But every single mass I've been to, I've encountered the living God because the liturgy and the Eucharist, no matter what else is going on, that's going to happen. And that's going to be the focus. And when that's the focus, my friends, that means that all the other junk going on in the church isn't going to take the place of it. Now, you might have all that stuff and that's fine. I get it. Okay. But you're going to know that's going to happen. So a lot of disclaimers in this video. Sorry about that. But here's what I I think it's important to set the stage. So here's what you need to do. If you are a person who's like, man, okay, I'm all in on Catholicism. I want to do this, but man, I don't, I don't want to feel alone. I don't want to feel like I'm on my own. I want to like get plugged in and meet some people and find this community. That's so amazing because imagine what it's like when you've left all of that, that you had in the Protestant world or in the secular world. And you've come into the church and you want to give your life to, 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 to the Lord here. And you want to make this the center of your life. But yet you, you want to find community. What do you do as a Catholic? All right. And I'm going to give you four things. Okay. And then maybe some more as we interact on this together. The first one is this. As much as you can, be consistent with the mass that you attend. Okay. I I know I just got done saying that it's okay to bounce around and go to different things. I get that. You totally can. But as much as you can, try to be consistent. Because let's face it, the place you're going to interact with most with most people is going to be in the environment where you are. And if you aren't there consistently, then it's going to be tough for that to happen. So Try to find a a time and a place that works for you and go there and be consistent with that. And I would add to that, you know, don't don't show up right as it's starting and walk out right as it's ending. Consistently be around. Be around. Make yourself visible. Now, I'm not talking about walking out with a big sign. Hey, I'm new. I'd love some friends. But you can tell when someone is open to an interaction and someone is closed. You can just tell, can't you? 
you know, I'll, and, and I'll, I'll talk about that more for a second. If somebody walks in and they're looking down, they don't make eye contact with you and they find the, the a, a place in a pew that's isolated from other people and they don't, they don't look around and they're in a hurry. That person does not say if their body language and how they're behaving, hi, I'm looking for some community. That person is saying, hey, I just want to do my own thing, which is 100% fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. But if you are the person who's saying, man, I really want to like meet some people, then don't look like that. I mean, I know that might just sound kind of weird to say, but don't look like that. Look around, make eye contact with people. Hey, get this, smile at people, you know, walk in, say hi to people, greet some people yourself. It's not on, like, you don't know the other people there. Maybe they're new too. One time I was meeting with a guy uh, who had left our church. I ran into him in the street, not our Catholic church, but this is back when I was a Methodist. And I ran into this guy and he said to me, oh, I'm like, I said, hey, man, I haven't seen you in church for a while. He's like, yeah, we quit going. I'm like, well, okay, what happened? He said, well, you know, we've been going to this church for 10 years and we stopped going and nobody noticed. And so we're just mad. So we're not going anymore. And I'm like, nobody noticed. And I remember having a conversation with somebody about this guy saying, hey, I wonder where this guy is. We'll just call him Scott. I wonder where Scott is. And my friend said, yeah, I, I ran into him at the grocery store and I asked him and he just, he just didn't tell me. I'm like, okay. So um, I also knew that our pastor had talked to Scott and asked him how he was doing. And he said everything was fine. So when I ran into Scott and asked him what he was doing, and he told me that no one had noticed that he was gone and no one had talked to him, I said to him, well, that's funny because so-and-so said they talked to you. I know the pastor said he talked to you and I'm talking to you. And you know what he said? He's like, well, that doesn't count. I'm like, oh, well, that doesn't count. Well, what does that mean? You know, I, I think sometimes we can, we can just be in a place where we go, look, I just don't want to have these relationships here and I'm going to be salty about it. So my point is this. You don't know who's around you. Maybe they're new too. So even if you're the new person, it's okay for you to go up to someone and talk to them. It's okay for you to kind of be hanging around. So be consistent and be open, be willing and stick around for a little bit afterwards and, and get there a little bit early and be willing to talk to some people. You don't have to sit in a pew all by yourself. And it always kind of, I don't know, it's just weird to me when you go into a big church, especially, and there's all these single people sitting or couples in the pews right by the edge, but then there's like nobody. And then one guy at the very end. And it's like, if you go to sit next to somebody in a pew, people are just like, what's up with that? It's okay for you to sit near another person. And then that gives you an opportunity to talk to people. So be consistent, be around and don't like, put off the vibe of get away from me. We all know when people look like that. Okay. Okay. Next thing. Number two, I see some of you guys are, are, um, are, are saying this in the comments, start going to stuff, start going to stuff. Even if it isn't your favorite thing to do go. All right. Now look in your bulletin, look on the bulletin board, look on the website, find out where people are gathering and go. Now I know you might be thinking, but Keith, I don't want to play bingo. I became Catholic and I swore I would never play bingo, but you know what? I don't play bingo either. And I've never gone to a bingo thing. I've honestly, I've never seen that in my church. We don't do that, but <clears throat> it's sort of the generic Catholic fellowship thing. But there have been other things that have been happened um, that have, that have happened in my church where I'm like, all right, this isn't really my jam, but I'm going to go just because I want us to like meet some people. And that's okay. The point of it isn't the thing that you're going to do. The point of it is to go and meet some people and be around. So, you know, if it is bingo, then do it. If it's getting together and, and uh, doing some kind of service project in the church, just go. Find where people are gathering and get there. It's not going to kill you to go and do something, okay? Start going to stuff. I know it takes effort. Here's the deal. Community, finding community takes effort. It doesn't just happen automatically. I don't care what situation you're in, what church you go to. If you want to be in relationship, if you want to be in community, you're going to have to put yourself out there. And, and, and I encourage you to do that. So try to like figure out where you can go. This, this happened to me when, when I was a new Catholic 
in my in my own neighborhood, a couple of these things, you know, kind of came together here. I'll coalesce point two and uh, point three here at the same time. I was in my and I've talked about this before in my book and other places, but I, I was looking through our bulletin one day and I found there was a little announcement about the rosary being prayed in my in my neighborhood. And I saw it. I was like, oh, my gosh, someone's praying the rosary my, down the street because they do this thing where like every night of the week, people go and pray the rosary at somebody's house. And this this statue of Our Lady gets kind of taken around and people gather together and do this. And I noticed I'm like, hey, that's down the street for me. So I thought to myself, all right, I'm going to go. I asked my family, I said, hey, you guys want to come with me? And they're all like, no, nope, we're not going to that. We don't we're, 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 we're that's just weird to go to somebody's house. You don't know. I'm like, I'm going. So I walked down the street. And I knocked on the door and this woman answered the door and she invited me into her house. She said, can I help? I said, yeah, I'm here to pray the rosary. She said, great, come on in. And we prayed the rosary. And, you know, I, I, it was a little bit out of my comfort zone. This is before the rosary crew. This is before I was like more comfortable with that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to like find out where people were to go and do this. And what I discovered was that there are people gathering in the parish in small groups, in Bible studies, in prayer groups. I just didn't know about it because I hadn't really looked for it. But once I found it, then I was like, oh, okay. Now, I had known about our little men's group on Tuesday mornings. I was going to that. But I, when I started looking, I found these things that were happening. I just had to decide to get out of my house and go and, and find it. And that's what I would encourage you to do. Look for stuff that's going on and go. Now, even if you're like, well, it's not my jam, doesn't matter. Your jam is to find community. So go do that. Now, I'm going to say that the next point here is let God pick your community. All right. Now, this is a big one, probably the most important one. So when I went into this house, I walked in. Now, at, th at that time, this was, you know, maybe six years ago, I was, you know, in my early 40s. I'm in my late forties now. So, um, but everybody that was there that night to pray the rosary was probably older than my parents. Okay. So it was not my crew of people from the standpoint of like, these weren't people that I would normally hang out with. Cause they, you know, they're a lot older than me and you know, whatever, whatever. But here's the deal that didn't matter because we were there to pray the rosary and we didn't, I had a great time and I met these people and it was awesome. And every time that I walk by that woman's house and she's out there, I wave at her. And I see her in church and, you know, I made a friend. When we pick our own community, oftentimes what we do is we pick or we look for people just like us. And we've decided that that's who we can be in community with and, you know, not really anybody else. <clears throat> and part of that, I learned, I don't know about you, but I learned that from church. Because in every church that I went to up until that, every small group kind of situation was divided by life stage, we called it. So if you were, you know, in high school, you were in a particular group. If you were a young single college man, you were in a particular group. If you were young married, you had a particular group. So I, th I think you get what I'm saying here. You know, the moms with little kids, they had their group and the middle-aged dudes had their group, you know, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But what I will say is this, if that's what you limit yourself to in the Catholic church, you're missing out big time because some of the most meaningful relationships that I have enjoyed and continue to enjoy as a Catholic are with people that would never have been put into a small group with me in any other church. So there's a difference between saying, I can't find community and saying, I can't find the type of community with people just exactly like me. And what I'm saying is, let go of that and let God pick your friends. Let God pick your community. Let God guide you to the people that he wants to put in your path and wants you to be in their path because he's got a plan for that. But if you put a box around that, then you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out. And that's huge. So when you when you come into the situation, you've got to have eyes wide open. You've got to say, God, I'm part of something that's bigger than a little social gathering. I'm part of, of this amazing family of faith. And there's all different types of people in this family of faith. And you know what? That's scriptural, my friends. 
You know, the Bible says that that older men should mentor younger men and older women should mentor younger women. But how rare is it that in most churches to see that happening? Because we tend to separate everybody. You know, all the older ladies are over here making quilts and all the younger women are over here watching their kids play and drinking wine. I don't know. <clears throat> Probably not at the same time. But I think you get what, what I'm talking about, right? You got the Knights of Columbus dudes that are making pancakes and you got the younger dudes that are drinking bourbon and smoking cigars and talking about Lord of the Rings. I mean, we, we've got these little subgroups that we put everybody in. And my point is this, if, if that's what you have, okay, but don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself because God may want to bring someone into your life to be Jesus to you in a way that the person that's just like you can't. And I have experienced that in Catholicism in many, many, many profound ways. Friends, we're to be mentored. Now, and this goes to the next point, okay? And this is the last one. Number four is this. Start looking for ways that you can serve other people, right? So you might be walking around going, why is nobody trying to, to serve me? Why is nobody trying to, to cater to me, right? And I understand that. But what would it look like if you decided that you were going to be available to God to meet the needs of other people and to go and serve? I guarantee you, my friends, God is going to use that. So if you start looking around, I used to tell the kids when I was a youth pastor, I would tell the kids, like in, especially like in junior high, when they're like, oh, I don't have any friends, I don't have any friends. I'd say, look, or they'd say, <clears throat> I'm trying to invite people to come to church, but all my friends already go to another church. And I would say, well, then go invite the people that nobody's inviting. And I'll tell you what, our little youth group of 12 kids blew up to about 300 kids because I convinced about 20 of them to start reaching out to the people that nobody else was reaching out to. And you know what? They did, and it worked. Now, I know those are, that's a little bit different scenario here, but my point is this, everybody that's in your parish needs somebody. And there's probably somebody in your parish right now that feels alone, that feels like nobody cares, that needs somebody. And maybe they are a hard person to love if you get my drift. What I'm saying is this, you be that person to go love them. Because if you come into this thinking it's all about you, then you've already lost half the battle. But if you go into this being willing to lay down your life for the sake of the gospel, you see, there's lots of different ways that plays out. You know, and Jesus said, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. That applies in this scenario. If you walk in and you're like, oh, I want to be at the cool kids table in the parish, because even though you're an adult and there's no table, it still feels like that sometimes, right? But if you're willing to say, I'm going to reach out to the least of these, I'm going to befriend that person that nobody else seems to want to be friends with. I'm telling you what right now, God is going to use you in powerful ways and you are going to be super busy and it'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. And I think that what you'll discover is that's how we let God pick our community is it, it becomes from an, it, it, it begins as an act of self-sacrifice not an act of self-gratification. And the problem in the American church, whether it be Catholic or Protestant, is that everybody's showing up looking to gratify themselves. What do I get out of it? Go ask, the, go ask people who are bouncing around all the time why they're leaving their church or their parish and going to the next one. And oftentimes they say things like this, I just wasn't being fed, or I just wasn't getting anything out of it. And you know that may be true. I'm not saying that that's never a valid thing to say, most times, and I'm speaking generally here, most times what that means is, hey, I wasn't a big enough deal. People weren't doing what I wanted to do. Things weren't the way that I wanted them to be. And, and my point is this, when you show up saying, I'm here for others, I'm here to serve. And most importantly, I'm here to worship the living God that's true, man, you're going to find community. It may look different than you ever thought it could, but I'm telling you this, it's going to be better than you ever thought it could too. It just will. It just will. And I'm telling you, my friends, that's one of our biggest issues. So here's what we need to do. 
Here's what we need to do, all right? If you need community, focus on, on offering community. And those practical things that I mentioned, I'll run through them real quick one more time before we get off here in a second here. But be consistent with where you go and the mass that you attend. Be open in your body language, in your persona, in how you are, okay? Start going to stuff that's available and happening, even if it isn't your favorite thing. That's okay. Um, let God pick your friends, let God choose your community for you. And then the last one was this, be willing to start serving. And once you kind of get into that place, oh man, it'll be absolutely awesome. All right, friends, that's kind of the end of my little presentation. So I, I would love to sort of, um, interact with your comments here, um, a little bit. How's everybody else doing? Do, do you guys have, um, have suggestions? Oh, here's a great suggestion from from a man is to start a group to pray for your bishop and priests. Absolutely. If you start by saying, hey, let's, would you just grab a few people together? You know, my wife found some community at our parish when another woman just approached her and said, hey, would you be willing to join with me and pray every Friday for our kids and families? My wife's like, that, that'd be great. Okay. Um, Teresa says, I tried having a Bible study in my home in conjunction with small group ministries. No one came. That, that will happen. You got to persevere. That happens too. You know, you got to be willing to, to try things and, if it doesn't, then that's okay. Andrea says, I'm an old lady who never did a quilt in my life. <laughs> Again, we're just speaking in general terms here, my friends. Um, yeah, awesome, awesome. Immaculate Heart says, I attend the FSSP Latin Mass my, my city. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I sacrifice every friend for you. Hey, well, you can find friends there, man, because most people, that's the thing about the Latin Mass crowds, and that's what I typically go to, is it's real easy to see the same people week after week because typically people aren't bouncing around in, in that situation. Um, I like this here. Don't forget your priests. Do something nice for them for all they do. Gave mine on Easter, an Easter basket, and he was surprised. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, e extend an invitation. Yeah, and, and do that. Okay, I'm looking around here a little bit. And uh, yeah, okay, I like Trina's here. She says, I've picked out families to give bracelets and rosaries to the kids, and I have eggs for my chickens for their family. I've met some awesome people that, yeah. There's, there's so many things that you can do when you have that mindset. Um, okay, hey, what's going on? Hope in Christ, how are you, man? I, I miss you. Hey, Keith, is it out of line for me to ask our new pastor to, to recite the St. Michael prayer after me? I don't think it's out of line for you to do that. <clears throat> but if he says no, then just ask him if you can do it. All right, awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Hillbilly. Black's good to see you. Um, appreciate that, appreciate that. <clears throat> good to see you, brother. Hopefully you're... Um, doing, okay. are you out on an oil rig this week? Awesome. Um, okay. Oh, I like this one too here. Go ask your priest or bishop how you can help them. By the way, I, I, I referenced that because Hillbilly Black emailed me and said he, he, he works out on oil rigs. So cool. I would love to visit one sometime. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's okay to ask people how you can help and just be around and be willing to share with people. And I'm not saying that any, any of these things is like instant community. You got to persevere at this stuff, my friends, you got to work at it. You got to just make that who you are. And the other thing that's true is you can find like a lot of things, you know, we have an incredible community online with the Rosary crew. A lot of the people in here are part of that. And maybe you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're isolated. It's okay to use social media to have community too. That can totally happen. We've got great friendships that have developed through our prayer community on the Rosary crew. And that's, that's legit. I feel closer to some of the folks on the rosary crew that I've never met in person than people that I see every week because we're part of this daily community. It's, it's amazing. Walter says, ask not what your parish can do for you, but what you can do for your parish. That's awesome stuff, man. Awesome stuff. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. You guys are getting it. You guys are getting it. So just, uh, yeah, Trina says, try to get a regularly scheduled potluck. I went to the potluck at Trina's church one time. I felt like I was in the Methodist church again. We used to do this all the time. It was awesome. People were so excited and friendly, and um, it was great to be there. And just try to be Jesus to everyone you meet. You'll never run out of things to do if you make that your mission. I promise you. I promise you. If you, if you make yourself a gift to others, you are going to be in community. I promise you, my friends, it'll be absolutely awesome. <clears throat> um, okay. James, 
My brother James, does God sometimes will our isolation? Maybe like St. Paul in the desert for three years. You know, I, I think that could be that can be a, 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 a thing for sure. I think there may be a point in your life when God says, okay, I'm doing something different in you and, and you, you'll have that sense. But I, I feel like it's a godly desire to have community. And if you're really like feeling that, then it's probably okay for you to do that. But I think if, if God wants you to, to go into that space, then that's legit too. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you so much. Good, good to see you, James. Um, <clears throat> okay. It's kind of off topic here, but Hey, hi, Keith would love your thoughts on LA. I think you mean the, the D Dodgers. Okay. Yeah. My, my thoughts on the LA Dodgers. I think they're probably the same as everybody else's. You know, I, you couldn't pay me. You couldn't pay me to go to a Dodgers game, you know, ever again. Like I've never, I'm not a baseball guy anyway, but yeah, I'm, I'm over all that, man. That's just garbage. So I, I and I feel like I, I love to see what the, what the people were doing. Catholics and Protestants coming together to, to, um, you know, pray and to protest that I thought was, was awesome. So yeah, that was annoying um, at the, at the least. Okay. Um, so yeah, my friends. All right. Well, listen, <clears throat> I know it's kind of a short stream, but I, we're going to do the rosary here in about a half an hour. So if you're watching this live at 5 PM central, um, you can head over to the rosary crew with Keith Nestor YouTube page. Maybe I can put that link in the description, in the, in the chat here. If you've never been, um, how many of you guys have never been on our live stream rosary? It's something that you should check out. Um, let me see if I can find that here. Okay, check this out. I'm going to send you to the channel here in the in the live chat and just hop over there. And that's where we pray. The group gathers there every single day. We have a blast. 5 p.m. Central, we pray live. But there's always a 24-7 rosary happening. So there's, there's community there. And I, I almost said virtual community, but it's not virtual. It's real community. So if you need somebody to pray for you or with you, you can always hop in the 24-7. And especially during our live streams, um, you can be there. It'll be absolutely awesome. But I'm going to get going because we're going to get ready for that. So thanks, you guys, for jumping on here. I'm going to try to do more of these sort of impromptu lives with the topic. Oh, man. Next week, dude, the 27th, you're going to want to be here. The 27th at 2 p.m., G Gabriel Castillo from Gabi After Hours YouTube channel, which is probably my favorite YouTube channel on YouTube. Um, Gabriel's going to be with me at, at 2 o'clock on the 27th, and we're going to have a live stream conversation about the Luminous Mysteries. Now, if you're not a rosary person, you're probably like, what in the world? But we're going to tackle this issue of whether or not we should be praying the Luminous Mysteries. For some of you realize that's kind of a bone of contention. A lot of people are just like, ah, you know, don't do that. Um, spoiler alert, you know, we pray the Luminous Mysteries. Um, I've never met a guy more devoted to the rosary than, than Gabe. And um, so we're going to have a live conversation about that here. And you guys will get to answer questions. I put that on my, um, it's already on YouTube, like in the playlist question about Catholicism, the stream's already there. So you can make sure you get notifications. And if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please do so. I'm not a big, like, Hey, everybody subscribe thing, but that would really, that would really be awesome. I would appreciate that. And if you want more info about our ministry, um, there's a link to, or a, a little banner down here, down to earth ministry.org. You can find out more about what's going on here, but I'm going to try to do more of these little impromptu live streams in the afternoon. You guys are, um, you guys are awesome. I appreciate you taking time to hop in here and um, I'll see you guys back here soon. We're going to pray the rosary again here very shortly. Um, and then I'll see you guys back. I may even do another one of these later on in the week. So just pay attention, put your notifications on and you'll be notified. Thanks so much for being here. If you're watching in the comments later, or if you're watching later, not live, leave in the comments, some other tips that you have um, for how to find community. What's worked for you? What's been so your experience? And I'd love to, to follow up on that with you. So thank you guys so much. Take care and God bless. Have a great day, everybody.